Once upon a time, there was a boy called Jack. And this Jack lived in a cottage at the edge of the village with his mother and father. And this Jack was a hard-working Jack. And every day, he would go off to work on the farm across the valley. He would go up the lane and across the fields and through the woods and down the hill and along the lane and over the bridge, he hasn't finished yet, and up the hill to the farm where he worked. And all day long, Jack worked hard on the farm. He mucked out the pigs, he filled the barn, he ploughed the fields, he picked the apples, he pressed the cider. All day long, Jack worked hard. And that meant that sometimes, at the end of the day, when it was time for Jack to go home, it was almost dark. And on this particular day, when it was time for Jack to go home, it was completely dark. There was no moon in the sky to light the way. And they didn't have torches and batteries in those days. But Jack didn't want to walk home in the dark, so he went to see the farmer. You're going to make a pumpkin with a light inside? Um, I think we not. <laughs> Probably in a couple of weeks. Well, Jack borrowed an oil lamp off the farmer. And Jack took the oil lamp and he started to walk home. Down the lane and across the bridge and up the hill and across the fields and into the woods. And as Jack got into the woods, the wind began to blow. Ooh. help me with the wind. If you can't whistle, you can go can you do that? And the wind got louder and louder. And louder and louder. And the rain began to pitter-patter, gently at first. And the wind kept blowing. And the rain got louder and louder. Poor Jack got turned around and around and he fell over and he dropped his oil lamp and the oil lamp went out and he bumped his head and when he got up he didn't know which way to go to get home. It was so dark in the wood. Well Jack started to feel his way in this direction. He bumped into trees, he crashed into bushes but eventually he came to the edge of the wood and he stepped out onto the grass field and he started to feel his way across the field in the darkness. Another stone. We can have a big stone in a minute, you keep listening. And as Jack walked across the field, he bumped into a big stone. A huge stone, bigger than you. Hmm? Where there hadn't been a stone. Bigger than you and you on top of each other's shoulders. Bigger than me and... Bigger than you and Daddy. Yeah. And he bumped into the stone and he felt around and there was another stone and another stone a huge great wall of rock right in front of him a cliff thought Jack where there hadn't been a cliff that morning well as Jack felt his way along his arm went into a gap a cave thought Jack I can shelter here from the wind and the rain and so Jack stepped into the cave but as he stepped into the cave, he tripped over some sharp stones around the entrance of the cave. It might have been a bit like that. He tripped over some sharp stones and he landed... Turn that one. He landed, not as he expected, on a hard, stony surface. He landed on a soft, spongy surface. Well, Jack picked himself up and started to walk around. And he felt a gentle breeze. That's a soft one, isn't it? Not like the sharp ones. He felt a gentle breeze blowing in and out of the cave. Well, Jack went to the back of the cave to shelter from the breeze and he slipped and he fell and he found himself rushing down, 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 deeper and deeper and darker and darker into the centre of the earth and he landed with a... Bump! Bump or a bang. Well, Jack picked himself up and he felt all around in the darkness and he said, Wow! What an adventure I'm having. I'm in a great underground cavern. 
Well, just then in the distance, Jack noticed a little tiny light. And he started to walk towards the light. It was a big Polar Express. It could have been a big Polar Express, but it wasn't. As he went closer, the light became a square. And the square became a bigger square. That ladybird on my ear. And the square became a window. A window on a house. A house underground. Wow. Well, Jack went closer and he saw another house and another house. He saw a school and a church and a pub and a shop and a post office. A whole village underground. Well, Jack walked up to one of the houses and he knocked on the door. But there was no reply, so he knocked again. And the door began to open. And you can help me with this, because I'm sure you all know what an old door sounds like. And an old man peered around the door and he said, what do you want? And when he saw that it was just a young lad, he said, oh, please, come in, come in, sit down. And he sat down, Jack, Jack down at a table, and he gave him a glass of lovely, freshly pressed apple juice. And Jack had a drink, and he said to the old man, I'm ever so sorry, sir, but you see, I'm lost. I think I'm underground. You're not underground, said the old man. Don't you know where you are? No, said Jack, where am I? You're inside, said the old man. You're inside the dragon's tummy. Oh, sorry. Okay. Inside the dragon's tummy, said Jack. Yes, said the old man. Last week a great dragon came to our village and swallowed up the whole village. And then it set off, stomping across the countryside. And now it's laid down here and it's gone to sleep. And we are inside the dragon's tummy. Well, what are you going to do about that, said Jack. Well, what can we do about it, said the old man. I guess we just have to wait for the dragon to burp or something. Well, I'm not going to sit around here waiting for a dragon to burp or something, said Jack. Do you have an oil lamp? I've lost mine. And so the old man, he gave Jack an oil lamp. And Jack said, do you have a rope? And the old man gave Jack a coil of rope. It's a little one, isn't it? It's like a little bow. Oh, it's like a bow, isn't it? Like a tie. And Jack said, come with me. And they set off walking across the dragon's tummy. Do you want to move in a little bit closer? Well, oh, you're right there. They started to walk across the dragon's tummy. Not in this direction towards the dragon's head, but in this direction, down the dragon's tail. Well, as they walked down the dragon's tail, the dragon's tail got narrower and narrower and narrower until the old man couldn't squeeze through anymore. And so Jack said, you stand here and hold the oil lamp. I'm going on to the end of the dragon's tail. And so Jack took the rope and he squeezed his way through to the very end of the dragon's tail. And when he got to the end of the dragon's tail, he found the dragon's tailbone. Now, the dragon's tailbones are round with a hole in the middle. This is a hole. Like this. Like a polo mint or a donut, this is a hole. but much bigger. That is a hole. That's a little hole. That's a little hole. And Jack tied the rope around the dragon's tailbone, and then he set off walking back up the dragon's tail. He got back to the dragon's tummy, and he and the old man they got all of the people out of the houses, and they got all of the children out of the school, and everybody took hold of the rope. And you can help me with this. Mums and dads as well. And they began to pull. They pulled and pulled and pulled. And they started to walk up the long, slippery slope that Jack had slipped down, which was actually the dragon's neck or throat. And they stepped out onto the soft, spongy surface, which of course was the dragon's tongue. And they stepped over the sharp stones, which was the dragon's teeth. And when they got outside, it was daylight. It was morning time. That could be the dragon's teeth. Jack had been in there all night. Well, the people kept pulling and pulling and pulling on the rope. And just then, the dragon woke up. And the dragon stared down at all these people pulling on a rope coming out of his mouth. And the dragon opened his mouth wide. And he was just about to breathe fire over all the people. When the 
the end of his tail popped out of his mouth. <laughs> well, the people kept pulling and pulling and pulling on the rope, and more and more and more of the dragon's tail came out of his mouth. And they pulled and pulled and pulled on the rope, and more and more and more of the dragon's tail came out of his mouth. Well, by now, the dragon's mouth was wide open, and his eyes were wide open with fear as his back legs popped out of his mouth. And as the people kept pulling and pulling and pulling on the rope, the dragon's front legs popped out of his mouth. And then, with one last great heave, the dragon popped inside out. Can you do that after three? One, two, three. The dragon popped inside out. And there on top of the inside out dragon was the village. Well, the people all patted Jack on the back and they told him what a good lad he was and Jack went off home to his mother and father feeling very proud of himself. Now, you may think that's the end of this story. But it's not. Because about 10 or 15 years ago, I'd be interested to know if I've told your dad this story. About 10 or 15 years ago, I was walking in the part of the country where they tell this story and I came across this hill, it's all covered in grass now and there's trees all around the bottom of it, but there's a lane goes up to the top of the hill and the village is still there. And I went up to the village and I met an old man. Whose name was it? Well, you know what, it was 10 or 15 years ago, so I can't remember what his name was. But wouldn't it be great if his name was Jack? That would be good. And he told me this story. And I went for a walk around the back of the hill. This is a rocket. It could be a rocket. Let me finish the story. He went for a, I went for a walk around the back of the hill. And as I was walking across the field, I saw something lying in the grass. I picked it up. And it was this stone. Now that is a stone, isn't it? Tell me about it. That is a stone. Yeah. And I call that stone the dragon's tailbone. And I went to the other end of the hill where there is a cave that the local people call. Yes, it is. It's a bit like that. I went to the other end of the hill where I found the cave that the local people call the dragon's mouth. And as I was standing there wondering if this story could possibly be true, I saw something glistening underneath a bush. And I reached down I picked it up and I found, to my surprise, this old oil lamp. Now, I don't know about you, but I think perhaps that could be the oil lamp that Jack dropped when he went into the dragon's mouth. Now, what does that tell you? Must be true, mustn't it?